Hi, so it's Catherine Nicholson here from the virtual training team about to walk you through how to run breakout sessions using Microsoft Teams. So let's get started by clicking the Teams icon here on the top left hand corner of the screen. I've created a whole demo channel called Microsoft Teams demo session and as you can see I've actually started the main session here as a meeting. What I've done in advance as well is set up some breakout sessions. So I've built in two more channels for two breakout sessions that I plan to do in the session. So one breakout group will be Team A and one group will be Team B. So what's a good idea is once you've started your meeting is to actually open up these mini meetings or these channels as a breakout session that's live. So if I just click in Team A and come into this channel, I'm going to go down to the bottom here where the little camera is and click to meet now. Okay, so I'm clicking meet now. And we're now here in the main, sorry, we're in the breakout session. There's my face. Let me just take my camera down. And as you can see in the top left hand corner of the screen here, you can see there's another session, another meeting running, which is the main session. And I can go back to that at any point and still leave this breakout session open. Quick tip, don't exit by hanging up. You only want to leave it open and resume going back to the main session. So let's do that. And let's go to Teams again. And you can see we now have two meetings running in parallel. And I'm just going to get the second breakout group open and ready to go as well. So exactly the same. Let's click on that channel. Let's click to meet now. And here we have it. We're now in that second breakout group. So you can see I've now got the option to toggle between the other meetings that are running at the same time. So Team A is one of the breakout sessions on the main session, which is where we want to go back to to welcome our participants as they arrive. So I've got those breakout groups running now in the background so that they're ready to go, but you could actually press play on those at any point during the session. So when we're ready to create and send our participants off into breakout groups, we just need to do a bit of hand-holding with them. So the first thing is to make sure that each participant knows exactly which breakout group that they're going to be in. So they know whether they're going to be in Team A or Team B. And then what we need to do is guide them to that channel. So if you're in Team A, I would guide you to the Teams icon here in the top left-hand corner of the screen and encourage you to find underneath the MS Teams demo session the channel that says Team A because you're in Team A. And if you click on that, you can see that you're ready to go with the meeting. So your participants can just click join and they will automatically be sent into their Team A breakout group. And we can join them too. So let's do that. Let's click join. Great. And we found ourselves here in Team A's breakout group. Because the other breakout group and the main session are still running, we can resume and join those at any time. But while we're in here, let's just take a look at how we can open up a document to annotate and work on together. And again, you'll need to do some hand-holding with your participants so they know how to do this, but it's really straightforward. So we click on the Teams tab and we find channel, sorry, Team A's channel, because that's the team that we're working in. And it's open already, look. We're currently in conversations, but if you look in files, I've preloaded that with a document for them to work on. And this is really easy to do. You just upload and then choose a document from your system. So just cancel that. What we need to guide our participants to do is edit. And we can do that if you look at the three little buttons at the very right hand side of that ribbon where it says more options. If you click on that, Lots of options there, but you want them to choose the first option, which is edit in Teams. Now, this is really important. Every single person in the breakout session needs to do this so they can all see the same thing and they can all edit the document at the same time. So let's click edit in Teams so you can see what you'll actually end up seeing. And here's a document for us to work on. So everybody can work on this document at the same time just by using the functionality of PowerPoint. We can change our colors, so let me just type in here and say, here are my ideas.
Now, you'll find the participants can't type over each other because when there's a few people in the room, as soon as somebody starts to type, the grey box, that's the text box that you can see here, um, has your name next to it and no one can type while you're typing. So you can also see who's typing as well. The other great thing is you can see here that the document is saved in real time. So nobody needs to do any saving at all. Once they're ready to come back to the main room, then they can just close that and just join the main session again. Again, it's really important to let the team know. So if I just go back to team A, here we are. It's really important that they don't click the hang up button because that will throw them out of the session altogether. You just want them to join and resume the main session by clicking the play button here. So here we go. So we're all back in the main session. I'm the only one here because I'm the only participant in this demo. But ordinarily, you'll be able to see down the right-hand side who's actually back in the main room with you and who's not. And if they're not, then you could go and find them in their breakout session. So how do we share the posters that they've created in the main, sorry, in their breakout sessions? As always, we go back to Teams. Oh, just before we do that, by the way, um, you can do this at the very end of the session, but you can, as you hover over these meetings that are currently running, you can actually close those down if you want, but I recommend you just leave them open for the duration of the workshop. So let's go to Teams. And now what I can do is, as presenter, is to open the PowerPoint in browser. Okay, so I can see that now, but I need to share this with everybody else. So I'm just going to go back to the main session and share, and there you'll see it, the demand for perfection document. And then I can just say to team A, great, so who's going to take us through what you talked about in this session? To stop sharing, I just need to find this little button here at the bottom right-hand corner of my screen. I click stop sharing, and then I could go into um, the document that team B shared by going back into Teams and going into Team B's channel. And it's as simple as that. Really do recommend that you do some practice. It's one of those things that the more you do it, the more intuitive it gets. Because if you're super clear on how to do this, then you can really handhold your participants so they know exactly what they need to do at any point and nobody gets lost. Um, worst case scenario, if somebody does get thrown out of the session, and believe me, it does happen from time to time, then if you just click back in the meeting where you are on the participants tab, you can actually invite people into the meeting. So I'm going to invite my colleague Abby, and then Abby would get an instant message inviting her into the session. But she's not going to do that because she's not actually here in the office right now. Anyway, I hope that makes some sense for you. Really, really recommend you practice, practice, practice until this comes second nature to you. Best of luck. Bye.